Hey, did you know that popcorn ceiling texture can actually be dangerous? But you may not have to worry about it. And if you do, I'm gonna tell you what you can do about it, how to deal with it, and find out if it's anything to worry about. And we'll do that right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel here at That Kilted Guy Videos. As always, I appreciate you guys stopping by. My name is Guy Persala. I'm a 35 year professional in the construction industry and I have owned my own business of Mr. Patch Drywall for the past 15 years. And if you're into doing your own home improvement projects and you wanna learn how to save some money, take pride in your workmanship, and you wanna learn how to do it right, be sure and click that subscribe button down below and if you click the bell icon next to it, you'll get notified each time we put out a video. If you don't click the bell icon, you won't get notified. All right, now getting onto the subject of the popcorn ceiling texture. First off, let me tell you just a little short history of the problem with popcorn ceiling texture. Up until the late 70s, and it was right around 1979, which is when I graduated, by the way. And up until then, they actually allowed them to put asbestos in the popcorn ceiling texture. The reason is it added durability and, and asbestos actually had a lot of positive qualities like fire resistance and strength and it was just had some really good properties but the problem is it can kill us. So up until the 70s they allowed it but not all of them had it in it. Now first off let me get into why did we even spray this stuff. I'm actually one of the ones that was spraying it with my dad in the 70s and we sprayed quite a bit of it. We even did the glitter thing. So the main reason we did it is for cost savings. You could cover up a few more defects. It won't cover up everything, but you could get by with a little bit less work and then the popcorn would cover up some of those minor edges and defects. But it also saved money because most of the time when we were doing it in these track homes, they didn't paint it. So it saved the cost of painting the ceiling. But there was an additional benefit that actually did exist and it really does make a difference. They actually called this acoustical ceiling texture or aggregated ceiling texture, but the general public's come to know it as cottage cheese texture or popcorn texture. It was called acoustical ceiling texture because what's in the popcorn here, the little balls are actually styrofoam balls. So when you haven't painted it, they actually do have sound absorbing and deadening properties because they break up the sound waves. They don't echo as much. So it was great on uh, places like apartments and motels and, and things like that. But a lot of people liked it in their house too because you didn't have so much echo. If you've ever walked into a building or under construction and it's got hard floors like concrete or even wood and the drywall, no curtains, no soft anything in there, it'll echo like crazy. I've shot a few videos where I've had some echoes because I work on those kind of jobs and it's terrible. So this stuff, I heard it after we'd spray it, it would deaden the echoes a fair amount. And the other reason they kind of liked it is we were spraying glitter in it back then. We had this special glitter gun. We could spray gold or silver glitter and people thought that was cool. It kind of sparkled at night. It looked like you had stars on the ceiling or something. And you know, it was just one of those bad things. Over the years, we've come to realize it's got a lot of problems. And some of those problems are that it absorbs everything around your swamp cooler. If you have a uh, swamp cooler vent, it will often turn black and you can't really clean it. And then there's the danger of, does it have asbestos in it? Now, if it does have asbestos in it, then there could be dangers, but the danger is from airborne particles so it's not going to off gas it doesn't have any fumes that can harm you so basically if you leave it alone it's pretty safe it's when you disturb it but how are you going to disturb it well by trying to remove it and you don't know what you're doing you don't know how to do it safely or just trying to clean it some people vacuum it with a vacuum with a little brush on the end and that's going to disturb it the other way is you're going to have some water damage claims now and then you're going to have to scrape it off just to do the repair. I've had to do that many times and I've always wondered, does this ceiling have asbestos in it? Well, so when doing a repair, there is that danger that it could have asbestos in it. So what do you do if you're concerned about it and you don't know? 
Well, I'm gonna put a link in the description for a test kit and you can probably pick one up locally. They're usually about $8, $10. You buy this test kit, you scrape a little bit off, you send it off to get it tested and they'll tell you. Now it'll probably cost, I think it's like 40 or $50 for the actual test results, but that's not that much money for a little peace of mind. It also would give you a good selling point. If you decide not to remove your popcorn, you can at least tell them it's been tested, doesn't have asbestos in it. So overall, you know, it's really probably a wise thing to get rid of it because you're going to have to disturb it at some point. And if you know it doesn't have asbestos in it, well, then it's a matter of taste. If you like it, and some people still do, go ahead and keep it. It is a little bit harder to repair. Now, once you paint it, the more you paint it, the harder it is to repair. Because to repair it right, you need to scrape it, and then you need to feather the edges. But once it's been painted, it doesn't feather well. And the other thing is, if you do decide to start painting it, the more you paint it, the harder it's going to be to remove down the road. So it's much easier to remove it when it's not been painted or not been painted very often. So if you have asbestos, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. I wouldn't lose a lot of sleep over it, but I would get it tested. And if it has asbestos, you're going to have to hire a asbestos abatement crew and that's pretty expensive so there's some other options if you don't want to spend that because it could literally cost you i haven't actually seen actual prices but i think it's like six to eight thousand dollars to do an average say 1500 square foot home and they literally have to seal your house up every square inch of it put all this filtration stuff in it it's expensive it's a lot of work there are some options you can do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put out a separate video on how you can get rid of your popcorn ceiling because there's actually four ways that I commonly use and some of them actually do work if you have asbestos or you don't know. So when I put that video out, which will be shortly after this one, I'll try and make it pop up here on the screen in the little, in the little thumbnails and you click on that, you can go watch the different ways I would suggest getting rid of your popcorn ceiling. Hey, thanks a lot. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn how to do these kind of things yourself, like drywall repairs and miscellaneous home improvements, be sure and subscribe, click that bell icon, and then you'll get notified of future videos. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.